Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptair Owners Club. This morning, I was involved in a government advocacy uh, meeting with uh, Aptera's ambassadors and supporters. Uh, they are keeping this a little bit closed for now, but eventually they're going to open a website. And at that point, a website for advocacy for people that want to get involved in writing their Congress people or calling them or even going to the state capitol or even Washington to sort of lobby people in person um, about, about three major issues. One issue being the dealer laws in many states. So this is a map of... Um, this the teal color is states where direct sales from the manufacturer are allowed and then the purple violet bluish states are states where direct sales are not allowed but tesla has gotten an exemption for themselves and this uh, red maroon color are the states that direct sales are not allowed and what's kind of interesting is that texas is one of the states where direct sales are not allowed Tesla, as you know, has uh, moved their headquarters to Texas and they have uh, a gigafactory in Texas near Austin. And many thought that that would help them uh, have Texas change their laws. However, Texas has not changed their laws um, and Tesla is still not allowed to have direct sales in that state. What's funny is they have to take the cars that they build in Tesla, ship them out of state, and then people have to buy them out of state and then drive them back into Texas which is a little crazy. And that is essentially what Aptera will have to do in uh, states like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, New Mexico. Um, and then for these other states, Tex Tesla got themselves an exemption, but does not apply to other um, cars. So um, Aptera would have to, they would have to drive out of state and then drive them back in, to, in these um, blue states as well. So that's one of the efforts trying to get these laws changed um, so that direct sales are allowed. Obviously, direct uh, sales not being allowed are just a way to protect car dealerships and local jobs that the car dealerships provide. Um, so it's an entrenched interest. It's pretty hard to do, but that's one of the things. The other things are the helmet laws. Certain states have helmet laws, even if you're in an enclosed auto cycle like the Aptera. That I think should be pretty easy to change because I don't think there's too many entrenched interests in the uh, helmet laws and then some of the motorcycle endorsement laws in certain states. So they're working on those. Those all make sense. And then they also talked about the, um, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and how the two and three wheeled uh, vehicles were removed from it. What we found out is this was essentially the doing of Joe Manchin. Um, I mean, this was hearsay from the uh, lobbyist that was leading this meeting, um, but it seems very plausible. What happened was there was the huge Build Back Better Act, had a lot of things in it. Joe Manchin was not going for it. And um, before they give gave up, they just basically handed Joe Manchin a pen and said, just mark out all the stuff you don't agree with. And then he just marked out a bunch of stuff. And one of the things he marked out was the two and three wheeled uh, vehicles for the tax credit. And so that's why it's not in there. So under current law, uh, Aptera being a three wheeled vehicle is out, does not get the tax credit. However, they feel like there's still um, some avenues um, to get that reinstated. I don't think it's very likely, but you know, worth giving it a shot. Uh, so that's what they're working on. So they are planning on opening a website that uh, you can register with. And then if you want to help out with these, um, these issues, uh, you can help out with that. When they open that website, uh, I'll let you guys know about it. All right. The rest of this video is not so pleasant. So you might want to click off of it if you want to hear, if you don't want to hear not so pleasant stuff. All right. So all this talk uh, made me realize that obviously Aptera must be using lobbyists. They must be paying for it. So I did a little Google searching and figured out how much they were spending on lobbyists. And it's a little more than I expected. Um, so in 2022, $380,000. Uh, 2021, $385. 2020, $50,000. Uh, 2019, uh, very little, almost none. And then you can see that back in the first iteration of Aptera, they were spending about $300,000. And uh, not surprisingly, it's the same people. Like the main person was this uh, lobbying firm called GovBizAdvantage, where they were they were spending 
$240,000. Uh, it's a single lobbying firm uh, by this gentleman named Dwayne Gibson. I believe he was in some of the early uh, ambassador webinars, uh, Mr. Gibson here. Um, and then, so if you look in 2022, uh, it's the same gentleman, Dwayne Gibson, right here. And uh, 2021, right here, GovBiz Advantage, Mr. Gibson. And then I think that this number may be a little bit false because I think that these D squared tax strategies and BAST GLP are being paid by GovBiz Advantage to do lobby. They're like subcontractors, basically. Um, I Then I wanted to see, so before we get too upset about it, because I know a lot of people are like anti-lobbyists and lobbying and things like that. And um, before we get too upset at Aptera, I think we have to realize that lobbying is just what happens in America. Um, we may not agree with it. I mean, I certainly don't, but um, but it is the way that things happen here. And the reason that companies do it is because it works. Uh, if you look at this, a recent study calculated the total amount corporations saved from lower tax rate. They compared the taxes saved by the amount the firm spent on lobbying. Their research showed that the return on lobbying was 22,000%. That is a great return on investment. Every dollar spent on lobbying, the companies got $220 back. Imagine if you got $220 on every dollar you invested. I mean, you would 100% do that. If there was something that you could do that gave you a 22,000% return, you're 100% doing it. And that's essentially what lobbying does for companies. So you can't fault companies for doing it. If you look at Archimoto, they spent similar amounts. Um, if you look at Electromechanica Solo, they didn't spend as much. Um, I think they're deciding not to do that. And if you look at Rivian, which is a much bigger company, they don't spend as much either. Um, you know, they spent about a hundred thousand dollars. And I think it's because Rivian doesn't have a lot of things they need to lobby for. Whereas like Archimoto and Aptera are trying to uh, lobby for certain things. What are the things they're trying to lobby for? So if you go to that was a website called uh, Open Secrets. There's another website called ProPublica. And if you look at this, it shows you that this D squared tax strategies incorporated, that's this firm right here, um, was hired by GovBiz Advantage and they gave them $10,000 to work on these things. And it's the electric motorcycle tax credit extension. So that's exactly the thing that we would expect them to try to work on, which is getting the tax credit extension for electric motorcycles. So you can see that's what they were working on. And then what are the other things they were working on? They were working on the tax credit for electric vehicles, loan for a manufacturing plant. That's the ATVM loan. So that makes sense. Like if you spend $300,000 and you get a $150 million loan from the government, well, that was money well spent. Um, ch changes in vehicle standards and safety. I'm guessing this is like the rear view mirror thing or something similar to that. Um, vehicle research, um, vehicle efficiency and research. Maybe this is trying to get some government grants for this stuff. But anyway, these are these are all things that make sense. Um, the loan for the manufacturing plant, the tax credit for things. So Aptera is not spending their lobbying money on silly things. They're spending, spending it on the things that you would expect them to spend it on. Uh, this is a summary of their lobbying arrangements for Aptera Motors. This, they're, so they're, they're lobbying on the electric motorcycle tax credit extension. Yes. The ATV and program modifications. Okay, makes sense. Um, so legislative monitoring outreach, uh, something about electric vehicles. I don't know exactly what that is, but you know, makes sense. Um, advocacy and education about the value proposition of Aptera Motors. So they're trying to sh show people how good Aptera is in terms of for the environment, for energy, for uh, energy security, you know, all that kind of stuff, all the things we know about. And then tax credit for um, electric motorcycle loans, uh, the ATVM loan, and then uh, automobile issues about, you know, like classifying as auto cycle, registration, insurance, that, that, that kind of thing, I think. All right. So um, it is a little more than I expected they were spending. You know, $300,000 isn't a small amount of money, but, you know, in the end, that may be a wise decision if it, uh, if it gets them that loan or gets them the tax credits. Um, I, you know, ideally, you would have hoped that like Aptera and Archimoto and Dr. Mechanica would kind of join forces. And as you can see, if you look at Archimoto, they've hired the same person for about the same amount of money, probably lobbying for the same thing. The GovBiz Advantage, Dwayne Gibson, um, Gov Business Advantage, Dwayne Gibson. So uh, Archimoto and Aptera have hired the same uh, lobbyist 
to to go for the same issue, which is a great deal for this guy because he's getting six hundred thousand dollars to uh, to basically do this the same work. Um, and uh, if you look at this lobbying firm, I mean, they're taking in about two million dollars, so it's a single person lobbying firm. So uh, Mr. Gibson, I have to applaud him. He's doing he's doing quite well for himself. Um, okay. Um, the next part of this, I wanted to kind of talk about how you guys think I should deal with some of the commenters on this page. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Many, many of you guys have probably heard of this. Dunning-Kruger effect is um, named after two psychologists, Dunning and Kruger. And what they realize that people that have a little bit of knowledge have um, uh, kind of unwarranted confidence in their ability. And so they call this the peak of Mount Stupid here. And so I believe the graph actually should be much higher here. And then after a while, you realize that you don't know that much. And then you actually learn stuff and then you get more comp confidence in your uh, ability. And usually I would say that this peak is much higher. People that really know stuff don't generally have the level of confidence of people that know a little bit. And uh, this is something that was codified by um, Dunning and Kruger as the Dunning-Kruger effect, but it's been well known and well observed by many people. You know, there's a very common saying that a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. That's because if you have a little bit of knowledge, you end up here. Um, and there's all these quotes, you know, one of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. Or confidence is the prize given to the mediocre. Socrates says to know is to know that you know nothing. Uh, and Confucius said, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. Um, Tom Sowell, it takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of your own ignorance. Education is the progressive discovery of our own ignorance. The greatest obstacle to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. People who think they know stuff. Okay, so there are, uh, there are people uh, that are in the commenting group that are here. And, you know, I kind of leave them for a little bit, hoping that eventually they'll make it off the mountain and start coming to here. But some people just refuse to gain knowledge and they just like to stay here because it's a very comfortable place to be. You feel supremely confident in your own um, knowledge and your own ability because you're here. That's when you have the most confidence. You're supreme and it's a very comfortable place to be. And people don't like to go through this. This is a very painful place to be. So people like to stay here and it's very easy to stay here. You just don't learn anymore and then you can stay there. Um, I, in my job, I work with a lot of doctors and um, there's an article here that why doctors make terrible traders. It's because a lot of people that have competence in one area and are good at something, they feel like their competence in one area automatically translates to competence in another area. Um, and that's really dangerous because you have these like really smart people like doctors and scientists and they doctors are just known to be terrible, uh, uh, like usually not very good at managing finances because they feel like, well, I'm, I'm a smart guy. I know a lot of things and I can definitely manage this thing, um, which is not always true. So uh, people also have to understand that competence in one area does not necessarily translate to competence in another area. And then like, you know, like. I like to tell you guys when I think I'm speculating, we're all, we're all susceptible to this. We all go through this. Like, you know, I, I, I've definitely been on Mount Stupid multiple times in many areas. Um, and I'm probably still there in a lot of areas too. Um, but like, there's this gentleman, like this uh, gentleman, I'm not gonna, I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to call him out because um, this is, public, but see, he's trying to learn stuff. Like you, like you can tell by reading this comment, that he has concerns, but he's generally trying to like figure things out. And I think this kind of comment is very good. And um, I, I want to foster a, a community where we like learn stuff from each other, because I certainly learn from your comments and where people can kind of learn from each other. And people like this, they have concerns like this gentleman has concerns about the cooling system, which I think are legitimate concerns. And he you know wonders if uh, Aptera is a scam and things like that. And he has reasonable ideas for that. And he seems genuinely interested in learning. And I think those are great. There's other people, I'm not gonna call them out, that obviously 
are just very happy to stay on top of Mount Stupid here. They just want to stay there. They're very happy to stay there. And I've, I I kind of read their comments and see if they're kind of going to move into this direction. But they are obviously not. And I'm wondering, should I just uh, like squelch them and put them in the corner? I'm kind of saying yes. But if you guys think that I should just let these people who are staying here just spout off all the time, I will allow that to continue. Um, but if you feel like after we've given them a reasonable amount of time that they just plan on staying here and just broadcasting their own uh, ignorance, then um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that too. All right, so let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks to our supporting members and have a great day, everyone.